Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, me, I'm here with my partner to present our work on fabrication of silicon nanowire using metal acidic chemical agents. My name is Trang Nguyen. My name is Kelvin Franco. Our research advisor is Dr. Aubin. Our research mentor is Michael Adetunji. We begin our presentation with an introduction to nanotechnology. Nanotechnology can be defined as the manipulation of atoms and molecules to get a desired macroscale product. Nanotechnology can be found in many aspects of our daily lives, stemming from smartphone devices, solar panels, sunglasses, and microscopic lenses. Silicon nanowire is an integral part of nanotechnology. So silicon, um, silicon wafers uh, reflectivity can be uh, explained using Fresnel equations where uh, which is equation one on the slide where we have n1 which is 3.88 um, is the index of reflection of silicon so using this equation we're going to arrive at 34 percent of reflectivity meaning when photon hit the silicon uh, wafers 34 percent will reflect and only 66 percent will absorb however by growing silicon nanowires on silicon substrate we were able to reduce this 34 percent to approximately zero so the silicon nanowire can be grown using different methods such as metal mediate vapor liquid solid solution liquid solid or physical vapor deposition or using the maze we are focusing on using the maze to grow silicon nanowires because this is a wet etching process which don't require any complicated machines that we can do this process in room temperatures which is a great advantage for mass productions um, due to its low cost compared to like all the above method that I have mentioned. Uh, so silicon nanowire can only be grown inside the clean room. And what is clean room? Clean room is the controlled environment where it's free of unwanted gas particles such as monitors, which are generated under the micro scale or larger. The level of cleanliness inside the clean room can indicate using the mean fee pad. So we're doing this because we want to eliminate as much as possible all the impurity from the fabrication of nanowires or fabrication of nanotechnology in general. So there is many ways to uh, build a clean room. However, the clean room at North Fox State University, we use a unidirectional for vertical flow. Uh, every staff and student who enters the clean room need to wear through the clean room training and we also need to wear a garment to prevent ourselves from getting the clean room contaminated. So our goal for this project is to use the maze to grow the silicon nanowires. Uh, we aim to reach approximately 0% of reflectivity. And at the same time, we would like to see the relationship between the aging time and the reflectivity. Uh, and our next goal is to measure the reflectivity of the grow silicon nanowire using the spectrometers. And lastly, we would use to like we would like to use this project to um, ask reproduction for students, where students can have a brief glance at nanotechnology and its publications. Also, an uh, introduction to the clean room, and this can be used as a detailed lab manual for students. So let me run you, uh, we do a quick maze process. The maze start with the cleaning process, uh, and then it can break down into two step maze where we have the depositions and the etchings. Then we arrive at the removal of excess catalyst metal. And lastly, we do nitrogen gun to dry the grow silicon nanowires. However, the same process can be grown using one step maze where we combine the depositions and the etching together. So the cleaning process contains four mini steps, which will be mentioned in detail by my uh, by Kelvin in the next slide and continue to the deposition in two-step maze we have we going to use sober nitrate combined with hydrofluoric acid for etching solution we also going to use hydrofluoric acid with hydrogen peroxide 
But in one step, maze, we're going to combine sulfur nitrate with hydrogen, hydrogen fluoric acid. Lastly, we're going to use um, hydrogen, um, sorry, we're going to use nitric acid to remove any excess catalyst metals. We begin the cleaning process of the parasilicon wafer, then continue with acetone solution where we submerge silicon wafer into acetone and that acetone into a petri dish. Petri dish is then submerged into an ultrasonic bath for five minutes. We then continue with isopropyl alcohol. We submerge the silicon wafer into isopropyl alcohol, which is submerged into the petri dish. That petri dish is also submerged into the uh, ultrasonic bath for five minutes. To remove any impurities, we use a prepared piranha solution, which is composed of 98% sulfuric acid and 0.15 molarity hydrogen peroxide and the 3 to 1 ratio respectively. We submerge your silicon wafers in a piranha solution for 10 minutes. We then follow that by submerging the silicon wafers into a buffer solution, which is made of a 5% hydrofluoric acid for 3 minutes. We ultimately obtain our clean wafer. On the bottom left corner, we have silicon wafers that have been placed on a petri dish. That petri dish is placed in the ultrasonic bath, which has been set for five minutes. And on the bottom right, I'm doing a couple of experiments. Uh, we continue with the, our one-step MACE methodology. We prepare a deposition and chemical etching solution with 0 0.02 molarity silver nitrate and 4.8 molarity of hydrofluoric acid. In this process, we have deposition taking place where silver ion gains an electron and a silicon substrate loses an electron. The silver ion is then deposited onto a silicon substrate. The silicon substrate is oxidized, becoming soluble on a hydrofluoric acid solution. The silicon particle then sinks into the silicon substrate, thereby creating silicon nanowires. We then remove the excess silver with 70% nitric acid and on the bottom left, we have pictures of bare silicon nanowire, bare silicon wafers. Then placed in silicon, or then placed in a chemical etching solution. And the bottom right, we have the etching solution, which has been dried up and removed of any excess silver ions. So um, A is going to be uh, the the sample that we would age for 45 minutes, B is the sample that we would age for an hour, and C is an hour and 30 minutes, and the last one is we have aged for two hours. Stepping to the two-step May process, we also started with clean silicon wafers. This clean wafer will be submerged into deprotein solutions, which contain of 0.02 mole of silver nitrate with 4.8 hydrofluoric acid, for a volume ratio of 1 to 1 in 1 minute. Uh, during this process, silver nanoparticle will be deposited on the silver wafer, like what Kelvin would previously explain on the last slide. Then we come to the aging solution where it's, com co it's combined 4.8 mol of hydrofluoric acid with 0.15 of hydro hydrogen peroxide, which is an oxidation agent. So on top of the silicon would be oxidized during the deposition process, like Carol would explain for the one-step maze. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is also oxidizing the silicon. Then HF will come in and dissolve oxidized uh, silicon, causing the silver nanoparticle to sink down, creating so nano wires. So the difference between one step maze and two step maze is in the two step maze, hydrogen peroxide also oxidizes silicon on the surface, which causes the silicon uh, with a nano wire to be more porous compared to the one step where it doesn't have hydrogen peroxide. So the nano wires from the one step will be less porous and more pointy. So after that, we come to the removal of excess catalyst where we gonna let the wafer stay inside the nitric acid solution for 10 minutes. The concentration of the solution is 70%. And lastly, after we dry this wafer with nitrogen gas, we arrive at our product. Top 
left corner you can see the clean silicon wafers and on the bottom we can see our result after we have aged for 45 minutes one hour one hour and 30 minutes and also two hours we continue with the results that we obtained from the spectrometer these results describe to us the trends that occur with one-step mace with the bare silicon wafer we notice that we obtain 36.44% on average for reflectivity. And on the right-hand side, we see that with the one-step maze, we obtain uh, on the blue line 1.2% reflectivity. The blue line represents 45 minutes of etching. And on the orange line, we see that we obtain 0.6% reflectivity. The orange line represents one hour of etching. And on the gray line, we obtain 0.4% reflectivity. And the gray line represents one hour and 30 minutes of etching. Lastly, we obtained 0.2% of reflectivity with uh, two hours of etching represented by the yellow line. In general, we can see that as we increase the etching time, the reflectivity decreases. So continue with the resort from the two-step may also using the spectrometer. So from bare silicon wafer, we know that it have a 36% of reflectivity. But using the maze, we were able to reduce this a lot more. Uh, for 45 minutes etching using the two-step maze, we're going to be able to reduce the reflectivity to 0.7. And as we increase it to one hour, the reflectivity go down to 0.5%. And one hour and 30 minutes, the reflectivity go down to 0.3%. And lastly, two hours, the reflectivity arrive at 0.2%, which is very, very close to approximately 0% of reflectivity. So we achieve our goal of arriving at approximately zero reflectivity using grow using maize to grow silicon nanowire on silicon substrate and at the same time we also see an invert relationship between the reflectivity versus the um, etching time that as we increase the etching time we the reflectivity reduces we use an optical microscope to observe the samples that we obtained from the silicon wafers and on the right-hand side, we see that the sample is somewhat cloudy and that there are certain shades that are obtained. We can't obtain the details of the silicon nanostructures because we're on the micro scale, but we can get over a general idea of what's happening. And on the left side, we're observing the process taking place with the microscope. We continue with the application of silicon nanowires. Silicon nanowires can be applied in the domain of thermoelectric materials, nanoholes, and photon-based transistors, and solar panels. Thermoelectric materials generate current through a change in temperature that occurs. Nanohole arrays are used in the development of super lenses and photon-based transistors poses an alternative to electron-based transistors, which dissipate more energy, wasteful energy. And last but not least, solar panels become much more efficient with the use of silicon nanowires, which absorb photons at, a, at almost 100%. With the 100%, we can generate much more efficient energy and convert um, uh, almost all of our energy into electricity. For future works, we intend to compare and contrast the different orientations of 110 silicon substrates with 111 silicon substrates. In our experiments, we use 100 crystal orientations and obtain our results that correspond to that orientation. On the right, we can see the FCC-based cube structure for silicon and the crystal orientation for S1100, which is the construction that we used when testing our silicon nanowires and observing them under the spectrometer. And to the right, we see the construction of 110 crystal lattice structure. So at the same time, we also want to see how what our different metal catalysts going to have effect on the silicon uh, nanowires. So for this topic, uh, for this research uh, project, we specifically choose silver as our deposition for metal catalyst. However, there are also other type of metal can be deposited for the maze process such as gold, copper, or palladium. We want we would like to see whether or not the relationship between reflectivity and etching time are still the same when we use different type of metal colors and as well as the different structure or different effect that is half 
on the silicon nano wires. So we are very grateful for this opportunity being in the ER in the ERU's program. From this program, we will have learned how to grow the silicon nano wires, which is very extraordinary. We have the clean room training where we gain clean room experience. And especially, we also gain the skill to use a spectrometer as well as a microscope. And we will also learn how to do data analysis. And we agreed that teamwork make dream work. We also have fun with our micron visits and a bowling day. And my experience is always ask questions. The more questions you ask, the more you're going to learn. I would like to extend my acknowledgments to the RU program and Dr. Alvin, who is our advisor, and Michael, who is our mentor. Thank you. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate your attentions.